Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. In this video, I want to talk about the three ways that I finish my embroidery hoops without glue. And I didn't know that people took textile arts to framers to be framed professionally. It didn't even occur to me that that was like a thing uh, until I started watching floss tubes. So I've always just finished my pieces on my own and I either finish them in a hoop like um, this little guy is finished in a hoop or I will frame them and finish them in a frame and I'll put them on a backing. I usually use lacing and I can talk about that in a different video if anyone's interested. And then I put it in a frame that I get from, I don't know, Michael's or online or a frame that I have or from a thrift store. But today I want to talk about hoops. And I know a lot of people use glue in their hoops and that's perfectly fine. And I have no problem with that. In fact, I use glue when I finish pieces that are meant to be translucent or transparent. So if I stitch on chiffon or if I stitch on a netting or something that I want, like the see-through nature is part of the deal. You obviously don't want to finish it like this because you would see the backing. I mean, this one here is fully backed. So the see-through nature is irrelevant. But if I just have a normal fabric that I don't want you to see through, I will just, um, I, I won't use glue because, well, there are two reasons why I don't use glue. The first reason is that glue is both permanent and temporary. I don't know how long glue lasts uh, on wood like this. So if I'm gluing this to the hoop, it may come apart easily. Um, and, and I just don't know the longevity of that type of finish. So it's impermanent in that way but it's permanent because the glue gets into the cloth fibers and you can't get that out. As a historian who works in archives a lot, that bothers me. Like the changing, uh, the impregnating of the fabric bothers me. So that's the first reason why I don't use glue. I just don't like what it does to the fabric and I don't know how long it stays. And maybe I'm delusional, but I, I feel like I put a lot of work into these pieces and I want them to be just as good in 20, 30, 40 years as they are today. Maybe no one else cares that much about my pieces, but I care about them. The other reason why I don't use glue is because I want these pieces to be versatile. So for example, I'm sending this out to a friend of mine in Nebraska, actually, after I film my floss tube, which I'm filming right after this video. And it's mounted in a hoop. She can put it on her wall. I think she probably will maybe in her office. But if in 20 years or 30 years when she retires, she doesn't want it on her wall or her kids don't want it on their wall, I, I'm really delusional that I think people will be like handing down my pieces to their children. Um, but anyway, if, if she wants to do something else with this, she can cut it out without cutting the fabric, just cut the threads out, unhoop it, and can make it into a pillow or a seat cushion or something like that. She can applique it onto a bag I don't make, or make a bag out of it. I don't know, she sews and stuff. So like whatever she wants to do, it's not permanently in this hoop, but it is permanently in this hoop as long as you want it to be. For those two reasons, I really like using a sewing method without glue to, to frame my hoops in, in the pieces. I'll put a timestamp up and also in the description of each of my different methods. So you can jump right to that if you want to check that way out. Um, otherwise you can watch the whole thing and get all three and that's fine too. So the easiest version of finishing is using this method here. And essentially it's just gathered around the back and tied in a nice double knot. This I used embroidery floss because it matched the frame. Um, but the nice thing about this is you can see the stitches. I know a lot of people actually really like seeing the backs of their pieces because it reminds them of the work that they've done. And so this is a good way to finish it and be able to see the stitches. The next way I did on this one, and it's very similar on the back, but there is an extra step with an extra piece of fabric that protects the threads on the back and also adds a little heft to the hooping fabric, to the front fabric. So I would use this if there is a fabric that is maybe a little slippery or is um, more transparent than I would want it to be. And so this kind of adds an extra bit of weight to the piece and also protects the back flosses and the stitches. 
It also, if you have messy hoop butts, it covers up your messy hoop butt. Um, I don't have messy hoop butts. I am very particular about my hoop butts. No judgment if you have messy hoop butts. But if you want to cover it, this is a good way to do that. And then the final way is kind of the most polished way of, of finishing up a hoop. And I did that on my Lonely Mountain. And as you can see on the back, it's fully finished. It has a complete cover on the back. Um, you don't see those raw edges like in the other pieces. And the nice thing about this is that if you have, well, you can use a felt, which is what I use here and what I usually use, um, or you could use a fabric. And if you sell your hoops on Etsy or on a website or at a store, you can actually put information on the back here. You can put the, your name, the name of the piece, you can put the date, um, you can put your contact information, you know, you, there's space for writing on the back of this that can give more information to whoever buys your pieces or to you for, to remember when you did your pieces. So this has lots of possibilities. It's really nice because it's all covered. It kind of protects the wall. You, you don't see the raw edges, which is kind of nice. So this is kind of the most finished piece. You've already seen these pieces. Um, if you watch my floss tube, you saw these finished objects uh, two Fridays ago, I believe. So they won't be a surprise to you, but keep watching if you want to see how I actually finished them. For the first and easiest way that I back my hoops without using glue, all you need is your, uh, you need a hoop and your embroidery or cross stitch. Um, you need some small scissors, you need some pinking shears or some larger scissors. I like pinking shears because it prevents fraying. Um, you need a large needle, although any needle will do, but I prefer a large needle. And you need either thread, this is just normal sewing through all purpose thread, um, but I kind of like, if I'm gonna use a spool of thread, I like buttonhole thread because it's thicker and stronger. Um, or if you have just old, floss lying around that isn't nice. This is just really cheap, not nice floss. I'm never gonna use it to stitch. So I use this to um, tie up my, my hoops. And I think I'm gonna use this today. So we'll move this out of the way. The first thing you wanna do after everything's moved off is you want to cut a circle around this. And I usually go about an inch from the hoop. I'm going to use my pinking shears. You want a length of floss, and like I said, this is really cheap floss. This is not good floss. You don't need to use your good floss for this. In fact, you don't want to waste your good floss on this. And you want it to basically go around the outside with a little bit of room. That's the goal. And because this is your cheap floss, it doesn't matter. And you take your big fat needle eye, thread your needle. And you want to leave, I don't know, three, four inches, a uh, three, four inch tail on your needle. At this point, you just want to do a running stitch. And I start at the top, um, roughly, I don't know, what is that? Quarter of an inch, roughly a centimeter. Um, I, you don't want to be too close to the edge because you don't want to fray. You don't want it to come out, but you also want to give it space to be able to bunch up. You want to leave a tail at the end. You don't want to tie a knot in this. You want to leave a tail. And I usually leave four to five inches of a tail. That's what I usually do. And then you just do a running stitch all the way around. When you get to the end, you want to come up either right next to where you went in, or I sometimes go over and actually come up on the other side, and that seems to hold it really tightly. So that's what I'm going to do today. You're done with this needle. And now what you have is essentially um, like a drawstring bag. So this is another reason why this kind of junky garbage thread is really good, because you're going to want to tie a knot and this 
really bad thread isn't shiny and doesn't slide well, which is why it's terrible for embroidery, but very good for this purpose. You want to pull it tight and it just pulls it together. This is why you didn't want it to bunch up as you were doing, as you were stitching this, because you want to be able to draw it all together so it looks fairly neat. And then I usually do a half square knot, which is I think what it's called, where you wrap it around twice. That seems to hold it better for me. And you pull it as tight as you can and you do another knot. And I do multiple knots because at this point you want this to stay where it is. that one and then I usually do one more and at this point it's done uh, it's not going anywhere and the nice thing about finishing this way is that if you want you can actually take off this outer hoop the outer hoop is actually not serving a purpose anymore um, and it's just connected to the inner hoop that's one of the nice things about this way of finishing is that if you want to take the circle and like mount it in a, a in another frame or in a shadow box without the inner without the outer hoop you can do that if you kind of want a more modern look at this point I just cut this off this is very long cut that off I just tie a little bow because I think it's cute tie a bow and then I usually do a double bow just so that I know it's gonna stay um, I let that hang I don't worry about it and then I cut off these, they're not too long. And that is fully framed. So that is the quick and easy way to finish a hoop. And you can finish any size hoop in this way. It has a very nice, neat back, especially if you don't mind your stitches showing. This is a good way to do that. And also I think it's nice for more country pieces, for more natural pieces. But this is the general way that I finish my hoops. The second way I finish my embroideries and my hoops is um, slightly more complicated, but really it's the same technique. It just has one extra step in it. This technique is good if you want to hide the stitches in the back of your piece. It's also good if you have very thin fabric or very sheer fabric that might be damaged by the hoop. Um, what this does is adds a second layer of protection for your fabric. And so what you need for this is a hoop, obviously. You need your embroidery here, as well as a matching or coordinating backing fabric, and that's what this is. And this fabric should be at least slightly larger than the hoop you're going to frame it in. Um, you need a needle, and in this case, I have a smaller needle because I'm going to use thread instead of the floss, but you can use either of these, but I'm going to move the floss away. You need pinking shears again or scissors and you need um, scissors to cut your thread. This is just here for me to um, help me hoop my embroidery. When you hoop your embroidery, you want to place your backing fabric on top of the hoop with the outside down, with the right side down, like that. and. This is just sort of a janky way that I cut it. It doesn't matter as long as it's larger than the hoop, that's all that matters. And then you place your embroidery right side up. The wrong side of your embroidery is touching the wrong side of the backing fabric. And normally I would make this backing fabric a little bit longer so you have a little bit more wiggle room, but I'm not gonna worry about it so much. And you wanna make sure that it is centered the way you want it. So let me move it down a little bit it's good make sure as you're moving things that it is completely covered by this backing fabric open up your open up your hoop and this hoop is just stained and then um, varnished and then you want to hoop it and what this does is it makes it very thick Right, because you have two layers of fabric now in the hoop, which means it'll stay nice and tight. So um, you want to make sure that the top piece is tight and the bottom piece is tight. And so what I do, um, so I pull on, I go around and pull on both of them. 
Make sure they're all tight. Look at the back, see that that's tight. So this looks pretty good actually. So I'm gonna tighten this and just go around one more time. Try not to distort it too much. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna tighten this up. As tight as it'll well, that's pretty tight. And as you can see on the back, it's clean. So it protects the stitches on the back of the piece and you can't see through from the front of the piece. So like I said, this is a good way of doing thin fabric or sheer fabrics that you don't want to see through because it gives sort of an extra layer. But keep in mind that if I had used like a striped fabric or something, you'd be able to see it through. So you wanna make sure you find one that is the right kind of fabric for what you need. So now that this is tight, I cut this off right at as close to the hoop as possible, being very careful not to cut this front fabric. So now that this is as close as possible, um, you essentially want to finish this the exact same way that we finished the initial one. So you cut this top fabric roughly an inch or an inch and a half. This is a pretty large piece. This is an eight inch piece. So the inch and a half would be fine. And I am, I'm never exact. I just try to eyeball it. But it doesn't matter if you're in the selvage, it doesn't matter. As long as it has space to gather, that's all that matters. And so for thread like this, I would normally double it up. But you wanna make sure that you can get it all the way around. Snip that off, thread the needle. So you have a little tail of about four to five inches, three to five inches. And you just do a running stitch all the way around. You want to make sure you leave a tail at the end for tying. And always make sure you don't pull that through. This is a very loose weave and so there's a chance of pulling. Once you get to the top, um, you basically do what you did before. So you do a, you can, for this, because the weave is so loose, um, you can actually tie the half square knot ahead of time now. And then when you pull, and so what you're left with is a very nice finish and no threads in the back. And like I said, if your backs aren't neat, or if you just wanna protect the stitches, this is a great way to do it. Like that. And if I'm not using floss, because this is so thin, um, I would just cut this. So I might just tie another half hitch and then just cut this. Um, the, the floss is kind of nice because it's decorative. This, however, doesn't need to be decorative. And that's it. So then I just sort of check it to make sure it's where I want it ready to go off to my friend in Nebraska. And this is what the back looks like. The final way that I finish my hoops without glue is also the most complicated, but is the neatest on the back. And so for this, what you need is your embroidery, obviously, the hoop that you're mounting it in. You need a needle, you need thread, you want a circle of fabric or felt that is slightly smaller or the same size as your inner hoop. Um, you want pinking shears, you want small scissors to cut thread, and then this is just to help me with my hooping my embroidery. This starts off very similar to the first one, but then the step is at the end. So you want to hoop your embroidery as you normally would. 
So now, as with the first way, you want to cut around about an inch um, and then do a running stitch and tie it off. But you want to tie it off, um, like, because it's the thread as opposed to the embroidery floss, you want to tie it off in a knot so that it's nice and tight. Okay, so that's finished um, exactly like the first hoop is finished. Now is where the difference comes in. What I didn't mention is that you need pins and I use four pins. So at this point, um, you wanna place your backing fabric or felt. And I like felt because it doesn't fray. If you're gonna use fabric, you either need to use like a fray check on the outside, um, pinking shear it, or if you want to be really ambitious, you can always hem it. But this you want to not fray. And you also don't want this to be a fabric with any stretch because you want this to be really tight on the back. So I like felt. This is just craft felt that I got at Michael's that is super cheap. So this is what I like to use. The first pin that I do, um, I try not to pin at the top, but I pin it a little bit over the fabric, um, the back of the hoop. So you want to go opposite and make sure that it's really tight. So I actually go up and then catch it and then come down. And so now this line here is tight and it's basically on the outside of the fabric of the hoop. And I do the same thing here. I go up, make it tight, up and in and out. And then the opposite side like that at this point you want a long piece of thread and again you can this is just regular all-purpose thread you could also use button thread which is nice and thick and you want to double it up and thread it you're doubling it up but you're leaving the loop this is to have, so you don't have to have a knot. I think this is called like a quilter's loop or something like that. Um, but you go in underneath where the fabric is and you just loop it through like that. And now this is secure. So this thread is now secured to the embroidery fabric. And at this point you can either do a buttons, buttonhole stitch, I think is what it's called, a buttonhole stitch, um, but I just do a whip stitch. So I come up under here, try not to get caught on my scissors, come up straight, and then go out like that, and try not to catch on the, the pins. And you want to pull it pretty tight. Um, and the goal is to make this an even line, but I'm just not very good at even. I'm not sending this to anybody, so if this isn't perfect, that's fine. But the goal is to attach the felt to the hoop. And you just go all the way around. In, in my case, I'm doing a whip stitch, but essentially you want this to be attached and sewn on. At this point, I like to overlap it a little bit just to make sure that it's really secure. And then once you get as far as you wanna go, you tie another knot. Right. And it's done. 
And this has a couple of really useful things about it. So number one, um, it protects the wall. If you're hanging this up, it protects the wall. Number two, it's very neat. And normally I would choose a thread color that matched this back fabric. And then um, you don't have this kind, these kind of lines here, but for tutorial purposes, uh, and because this is not going anywhere, it's staying in our house, um, I'm not gonna worry about it. The other thing it does is it makes sure that the front is really tight because now you have this kind of additional tightness pulling here. Um, if you want to put this in a shadow box without the outer hoop, this is really tight. It's not going anywhere. Overall, this is kind of the most finished, but it takes the longest. But again, the nice thing about it is that there's no glue. And so if something's wrong, you can cut it out and just do it again. Which... So I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for joining me today to talk about finishing hoops. If you're interested in um, learning more about my stitching or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I also, if anyone's interested, I could film how I mount and frame my pieces in like a frame, but I don't have anything right now that I'm going to be doing with that. So that'll be a, when I have something I'm going to frame, um, I'll, I'll maybe record that if anyone's interested. Not sure if anybody's interested. Um, but with all that, I think that that's all I have to talk about today with the framing of my hoops. Um, if you enjoyed watching this, please subscribe. I will have more tutorials and baking videos and floss tubes, um, you know, throughout the weeks going forward. And thank you all so much for, for hanging out with me. Please take care of yourselves and I hope you all have a good one.